If you own a 3D printer long enough, at some point you're going to want to build your own. And one of the first steps to get this done is cutting your own aluminum extrusions. Now, if you research the topic of cutting the aluminum, you're going to see a lot of people recommend use a wood blade on a miter saw. We're going to take a quick look at a blade meant for cutting aluminum and a typical wood blade. So let's get cutting. Hey guys, I want to apologize in advance. The neighbors uh, groom in their pets, so it's probably creating some vacuum noise. But that's okay in about five or 10 minutes, we're gonna be letting 15 amps of uh, 5,000 RPM aluminum cutting power rip through here. Our two contenders are this 12 inch uh, wood blade that came with the miter saw, this really expensive uh, Diablo blade. So I'm curious to see side by side the type of cuts they make. Now I cut a lot of, I cut a lot of wood here and um, I make my own jigs and I'll have some B-roll to show that, but I, I bought the aluminum blade and it's, it's an expensive blade, don't get me wrong. But I just wanted that peace of mind that I'm using the right tool for the right job. After years and years of trying to save money, um, I just realized that, you know, you try to save money and you just wind up paying in the long run. So we're going to see the kind of cuts these make. I've never actually compared them side by side. I'll give you a play by play of uh, what's smoother and uh, the noise it makes, etc. We'll also talk about, we'll cut this 1515, I think it is, from 8020. These are from 8020 Extrusions. It's a US company. Premium top notch aluminum extrusions right here. So we're not cutting uh, um, some cheapo stuff. Okay, so if you were listening while I was cutting uh, and you didn't fast forward through the, the saw cuts, there's a part where you captured me in genuine surprise. So I buy the Diablo blade as a safety precaution first. I used to be a carpenter. I know people who've been injured. Um, it happens if you work with blades and stuff long enough, you're going to get, you might, you might get hurt. There's a good chance of it. I mean, you can go to YouTube and see people who've actually got hurt, you know, woodworking channels even. So I was a little bit surprised when it, it wasn't just a safety thing, but a, a substantial quality aspect um, that really got me excited. It actually made the content more interesting to me. Now, I'm not trying to dwell on cutting aluminum extrusions with saw blades. So we're going to just do some close-up photos and while well, they're already done, and then we're going to compare results. And I'm going to go through this as fast as can I can and give you my conclusion and my thoughts on it. So let's, let's begin. All right, guys. So those two cuts you saw in the video, basically I cut it once and I was only going to do the video based on two extrusions or two cuts. And then when I saw that there was a quality difference, I was like, oh, let's make sure this is not a fluke. So I cut two more. Here they are. I used some tape so I can remember which one's which. But right off the bat, you can see at this at this range, you don't see much, right? There's not much to see. But when you zoom in, you can definitely see where some of the teeth cut a little bit more for one zone. You can see the, um, the chipping down the edges. You can see as they come through, they leave a little bit more of a galled look looking cut. Galling? Is that the right word? Somebody can correct me in the comments. Uh, yeah, so. And then let's compare the other side. Actually, the screen capture makes the Photoshop very slow. And we could compare this side. You got a lot less, right? You could see that the the lines are closer together. Let's see, let's just, you can see the difference right out the gate. And it still doesn't do it justice, um, so we'll get into that. Here's, uh, now I, I took a bunch of pictures of those cuts, and I thought they were kind of boring because it's a smaller extrusion, so I got the one and a half by one and a half, 
80-20 out and I did some cuts on that. And this time I took extra care to make sure the blade was well oiled. But here's your Diablo blade on the left. You can always see that the paint on the blade stuck to it. I put a little thing to denote that. Um, here's a color difference. So I'm not sure if this is shinier because it's sharper blades or what. I also did because I use oil on these and there is oil on the cuts. So I took a torch and I, I burned the oil off. I also burn off any t-shirt um, or cloth or whatever I use to wipe them down. Let's go take a look at the cuts just in a general sense where the saw blade ended. And also at this point I, I put all the extrusions where they were equal on the, um, the cut. So the blade orientation, etc. is all coming at the same time at the same angle. So the tops on the top and we could see one to one and you could see this in the video and the screen capture and see right there. So they're one to one. Um, but yeah, you, you see the circle very clean. See the circle kind of dirty. And we go here and you could see the just it's just not the same. Now that still doesn't do it justice. So we got this one. This is a Diablo cut. Looking very good here. It's the same cut. Where these are all gonna be the same cuts using different focal lengths so we could actually accurately see at all the angles. I don't have it, but let's just pretend this is the extrusion, it's outside of the camera range. But the light reflects differently. You see different features as it reflects. You reflect the ceiling. You reflect the outdoors. So just a few pictures wasn't going to do this enough justice. And you'll see that coming up. Here is the wood blade. And you can see, like, there's a little bit of uh, marring. It just make, gives it a white, frothy look at this angle. And that's very noticeable um, to the human eye. Again, we're back to the Diablo blade. Uh, I changed a few settings on the camera. I think I increased the f-stop, which is going to give a, a different focal distance. Not much to see here. Um, the wood blade, same thing, increased focal distance. You can see the cutting. Oh, here's a good one. So we just barely outside of the focal depth, but you could see it right there. The teeth are unevenly digging in at certain points in the cut. You can see that very clearly. Oh. It's pretty bad all the way through. Um, let's compare that real fast. Okay. I turned the extrusion sideways so we can get a different angle, and you can see it looks a lot flatter. This, I believe, is the Diablo blade. Yeah, because that chip is right there. Same. Yeah, it's definitely. Okay. So. When you turn it sideways, I don't know if you've ever done product photography or, you know, insect photography, but there's advantages to doing really sharp angles, um, and here's one of them. This is the wood blade, and you can see where that tooth, it dug in. That's crazy to me. And you could barely, I can, actually, I don't think I could see that with the naked eye. Um, yeah, because this is a, a, yeah, that's really hard to see. And you can, again, you can see those uneven cuts in detail. Another, uh, I, I, I cut these two weeks ago, so I, I don't remember. I cut and pho photographed two weeks ago. I don't even remember what I was doing at that time um, or what was my thought process was. Okay, guys, now look, look at this and take a good look. This is the angle I couldn't get, and I was... You know, something was in my eye, and I was like, I don't want to make this video and misrepresent the Diablo blade or the wood blade. And I was struggling with it. Like, that's why it took two weeks, because I didn't know how to go about it. And then um, I remembered something I used to do when I used to do product photography. And Eureka! And I went and flipped the orientation to reflect the ceiling and the lighting. I'm sure there's a photographer who's going to correct me on all this. <laughs> I, I'm cynical because now that I'm making videos, like I'm nervous that people are going to hammer on me. So, okay, so we got this. You can see where the blade wobbled a little bit, um, the Diablo blade. But look at those cuts. Very, for the most part, very, very, very um, 
in line except when you get to the center and there could be things I mean we're, we're cutting an X on the radial blade so the different um, you know as it cuts through a, a thin part into a thick part and back to a thin part could give the blade some resonance now here we go boom look at that let's let's normalize these real quick for maximum So these are pretty normalized on their exposure levels now. Wow. Just wow. So side by side comparison. Let me get the zoom to be the same. Okay. Side by side, here we go. This is the wood blade, Diablo blade. Wood blade, remember it? Diablo blade. So, you can clearly see a quality difference. When I was cutting the extrusions, there was a slight audible difference, and I think that's not a quality thing. Well, it could be a quality thing, but um, the Diablo blade, obviously, uh, it feels a little bit heavier. I didn't weigh them, but it has, uh, it says 96 teeth, and the pattern's a little different. It has three different patterns, Ugh. three different patterns, where the wood blade, I think, has two uh, different patterns. Um, but aside from that, the 96 teeth, you know, 5,000 RPM, 96 burrs coming in in the same amount of rotation versus, you know, the 48 teeth or whatever that has. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Here's my conclusions. Um, when you're cutting aluminum extrusion, especially aluminum extrusions, because we're making um, engineering stuff that has tolerances and we want our right angles to be right angles especially when you're going to be putting linear rails and all that other stuff so with the wood blade i get a kind of a. it makes a joint but there's wobble in it can you hear that i'm gonna try my best to get it into the microphone now let's put on the other side with the diablo blade I can barely move it. Think of uh, four legs on a table, and one of those legs needs to be propped with a piece of tissue paper or a piece of napkin or whatever. Again, from a safety perspective, I think if you're going to cut metal, you should use a metal blade. From a uh, quality perspective, I don't think the Diablo blade is that much more expensive than the wood blade. And, um, you know, it sucks when you got a, a dull wood blade, uh, you're burning the wood and stuff. So, you know, just if you're going to be cutting extrusions like I plan to, I haven't got into it in depth, but I want to build a 3D printer and I want to prototype it. So we may be doing lots of cuts to try and get it just right. Um, I think the Diablo blades are a worthwhile investment. Um, I'm going to have links in the description. I'm sorry if I seem like I'm rushing through this, but it is just it's cutting stuff. So it's not as exciting. And yeah, if you like the content like subscribe i want to build a 3d printer i want to show you my led lights i want to show you there's a lot of things there's only so much time i own two businesses uh one does really well the other one's kind of well the one that's doing really well it's on its way out and the other one i built um it's just it's a grind so i don't like doing it and i'll show you those businesses and something else i started on in an apartment uh, online i started selling online six years ago so there's a lot of stuff that I can show people. It's going to be 3D printing at centric. Um, another thing, one more before I sign off, is that I'm very big on uh, people who make good quality things. Uh, so I try to avoid the Chinese products. I mean, when you really review a Chinese product, I mean, currently, who knows when, five years from now, but it really, the F emphasis is on price. If you take the Chinese products and you raise the price to... A more westernized standard you nobody would be buying them so i don't want to make content that just revolves around oh here's how this cheap thing that i i bought and that i'm reviewing is it worth the pennies that i paid for it i want to make content that is both affordable and cost conscious but at the same time has a high yield of quality where you get it and you feel good and you really can appreciate the effort and um, time somebody put into putting that product to market thanks a lot this is Edward with iHeart3D Printing. 
And I look forward to hearing your comments and seeing you on my next videos. Uh, guys, thank you.